blue skies and pizza go together like, well, barbecue chicken and pizza. That's why it's time to enjoy an Abbey's original barbecue chicken pizza at a very special price. Abbey's, a legendary pizza tradition. I have no idea what I'm doing. That's why we need you. We need people to run cameras so I can get back down on the broadcast and talk about what's going on. We pay $75 per event. If it's sports, if it's a parade, if it's Apple Blossom, if it's the Super Oval, 75 bucks. If that sounds like some extra good money for you, we'd love you to be part of our team. All you have to do is email me, sports at ncwlife.com. And we are back. It's right smack dab in the middle of the month. It is the 15th day of June, 2023. It's a Thursday. I'm Dan Coons. This is Wake Up in Anchee Valley. Please, ladies and gentlemen, do not operate heavy machinery while consuming this local television program. It is 55 degrees, kind of a hazy sunshine. If you look off to the east, the sun's been up now for a couple of hours anyway. It's kind of a salmon pinkish kind of, kind of color out there. Temperature is going to be warming back up a little bit. Uh, we hit 74 on a very windy Wednesday. We'll be into the 80s today. High pressure moving in. Not going to stick around very long. We'll have above normal temperatures today, tomorrow, and Saturday, and then it just drops like a rock. Father's Day is going to be unseasonably cool. We're talking mid-60s on Father's Day Sunday, and the long-term forecast for next week calls for uh, quite cool temperatures for June. We'll have all those details coming up, plus news. We'll touch on that. Apple Sox are playing really good five in a row now. That's five. It's one more than four. Uh, they're playing really good baseball. Pitching staff's doing a great job. We'll have, uh, we'll talk about Apple Sox. Mariners did not beat the Marlins uh, last night, and we'll check in with Haley Van Lith again. She's had a pretty good summer. Lots of sports to touch on. In the back half of the program, we went up to the uh, Chelan County Fairgrounds in Kashmir. A couple of days ago to talk to our good buddy Chuck Egner. He coordinates all the talent, and I mean the really good talent, that comes here to our area uh, always uh, this weekend in June for the Wenatchee River Bluegrass Festival. Uh, the festivities have already begun. It it's, it's begins in earnest, and we let Ernest know so he wouldn't be surprised. Uh, it begins in earnest on Friday, tomorrow, and then it runs on Saturday and Sunday. It's fantastic. Great musicianship and a splendid time will be had by all. Chuck Egner, my guest in the back half of the program, and it's Thursday Pause for Pets. Felix the dog. Felix the dog, the wonderful, wonderful dog, needs a permanent home from our friends to the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society. Two minutes after the hour, the tour begins with our cameras around the valley. Good morning to the valley proper from the Wenatchee Heights camera. And uh, we're looking pretty good. I'm so glad they're going to work on those mosquitoes down there at Walla Walla Point Park. They're eating me alive when I was down there. That project, by the way, starts tomorrow. They needed the water to go down a little bit. And if it runs too fast, uh, the pellets that they drop in to kill the mosquito larvae just floats right down the river and doesn't do anything. So they'll start that tomorrow. And then finally, we'll get some relief in sight on this hazy Thursday morning. Next up, number one canyon. Going to look right at the sun. You're not supposed to do that. That's that salmon-colored sky I was telling you about. This is from a camera high up, number one canyon. That street that you see in the lower left-hand corner is Fifth Street. We'll be driving up Fifth Street tomorrow. We're televising tomorrow night's Apple Sox baseball game against Kelowna. We're looking forward to that. Love spending the summer evening at the ballpark. Good morning to Wenatchee. Monitor camera says good morning to Monitor and Kashmir. Uh, moving around a little bit. Still going to be a little breezy for the next couple of days. It's, it's just what it is. Look at all the orchards looking green and growing them crops, baby. Good morning to our friends in Monitor. We have a lot of viewers there. The Waterville camera is, uh, is looking that way. That is not Waterville. That's the Waterville camera. I'm pretty sure Waterville does not have a big river flowing through the middle of it, last I checked anyway. And there's a, that's a very high camera. You can see the haze kind of hanging over the valley. I really don't know what's causing that. It's kind of high clouds. I don't know. From our Waterville camera looking way down towards uh, the Wenatchee Valley. A couple of slides to show for you from the National Weather Service from the Climate Prediction Center. This is for next week. They issued this yesterday afternoon. So for next week, as we welcome summer officially on June 21st with the summer solstice, as, we, as you can see there, we have about a 60% chance of seeing our high temperatures below normal. And as you can see in the Colorado 
Utah area and in, into Nevada, it's going to be really chilly there for June. So about a 60% chance of our temperatures being below normal for next week. And as far as precipitation is concerned, not surprisingly, about a 60% chance of above normal precipitation. So after a very warm May, we had a cold April, colder than normal anyway, uh, and then a very warm May, almost one of the warmest Mays we've had on record. And June was off to a warm start. We're going to cool down and maybe be a little on the wet side as we go into next week. That's next week. Let's talk about the weekend for Father's Day. Uh, about 80 today with lots of sunshine. Still a little breeze. Northwest wind about 7 to 13 miles an hour today. Partly cloudy tonight, 58 for the overnight low. A little bit warmer on Friday, but we'll see a few more clouds on Friday. Not too bad. High of 83. Last day of the real warm uh, sunshine. And this high pressure ridge that's coming in will be at its apex on Saturday with a high of 78. Still windy though on Saturday. Then we cool way down. Look at the difference between the high on Saturday, 78, which is normal, to Father's Day, Sunday, only 67. That is cold for the middle of June, and it's going to stay below normal on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and it'll be a tad unsettled. Could even see a raindrop on Tuesday, which is fine by me. We need the rain. We're way behind on the precipitation totals. Five minutes after the hour, the news is two minutes away. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Live Channel. Hey, welcome back to Save Mart. What can we help you find today? Uh, we're looking for a mattress. Oh, right this way. We got a large selection. We have this pillow top here. Oh, comfortable. We have more to choose from down here. Oh. I think I have the perfect one over here for you. I guess we'll take this one. You find it at Save Mart. Full service at a low, low price. Hi everybody, Dan Coots alongside Jesse Coble from Alpine Air. Uh, there's like, there's ice on my heat pump and under my heat pump. Well, ice under your heat pump is normal. When we go into a defrost cycle, it melts the frost off, creates water, which freezes to the ground. Ice around your heat pump is a thing that you should probably give us a call about. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Alpine Air for heat and air. Call Alpine Air. Thanks, Jesse. Thanks. Free Motion E-Bikes is rolling out its new line of Aventon E-Bikes. Come in today and save $300 on the top-selling Aventon Adventure. Free Motion is Central Washington's home for affordable E-Bikes, located in the Mills Brothers building in downtown Wenatchee. It has really um, been a great partnership between Succession and NCW Life. It's not always easy to sit in front of a, a camera or a, a microphone, but um, you guys have made it a really nice process. Hi, my car's making a funny noise. Not a problem, we'll take care of you. Global Car Care's technicians are ASE master techs and well-versed in the more refined methods of vehicular diagnostics. Number three piston and rings have a slight loss of compression, down to 108 pounds. Your transmission is slipping. You're gonna need a service. Looks like you're all set. These guys, they're good. Oh, and your spare is flat. Global Car Care, Wenatchee's top shop. Easy sunshine, 55 degrees, lower 80s today, a little windy, not too bad. Next, I don't know, three and a half days, if you will. Significant cool down, however, coming our way on Father's Day. And there's going to be some wind off and on, really, throughout the forecast period. It's eight minutes after the hour. Thad Lawson, the thrift store operator who assaulted a woman in his business, has to spend 75 days in jail or on work release. The 57-year-old Lawson was sentenced on Tuesday after unsuccessfully appealing his conviction for fourth-degree assault in the 2019 incident. Lawson, who operates the nonprofit Veterans Warehouse Thrift Store, has now been convicted twice for assaults on women who worked for or visited shops where he was a supervisor. The Attorney General's office, by the way, opened a lawsuit last year accusing Lawson of serially harassing and discriminating against female employees at his business. He has to report to the Chelan County Jail to begin his sentence no later than June 27th. A Cooley City man charged with child sexual abuse has now has had his license to practice chiropractic uh, suspended. Grand County Sheriff's deputies arrested 52-year-old Tyrone Thomas Trexler back in March two charges of first-degree child rape. They say a six-year-old girl had disclosed instances of abuse at Trexler's previous home 
in the Moses Lake area. Trexler owned chiropractic clinics in the towns of Wilbur and Cooley City. On Tuesday, the Washington State Department of Health announced it has suspended Trexler's license to practice until the charges are resolved. He faces trial later this summer in Grant County Superior Court. Wenatchee Valley Mall is doing something new, a food truck festival. Sounds kind of interesting. It's going to happen this weekend. The three-day event kicks off Friday. It's going to be held in the parking lot between Sportsman's Warehouse and the Olive Garden. There will be eight total vendors, although not every truck will be there every day. Bavarian Kettle Corn, the Donner House, and Naughty Delights are slated for all three days. The R Shack Barbecue, the High End Nami Healthy Zone, and Cheech and Changas, they're going to be there Friday and Saturday. And Mama's Tina's Pizza will be at the event, but on Friday and Sunday, not on Saturday. The Food Truck Festival kicks off at 1 p.m. all three days. It'll run until 8 o'clock Friday and Saturday, 6 o'clock on Sunday, or unless the vendors run out of food. This is a really cool video, a lot of buzz on our Facebook page. It comes from our friends at the uh, Beaver Valley Ed Elementary School in Plain. Of course, there's all kinds of wildlife in the Plain area. And for quite some time now, students at Beaver Valley Elementary have set up uh, and maintained a system of trail cameras. And they finish each school year by taking all the footage that they compiled into a highlight reel. So from black bears to gray wolves to, I believe, a Sasquatch, here are some of the critters those cameras captured during this previous school year. Pretty spectacular stuff. By the way, that last shot that you saw was not an actual cougar. It was two guys in a cougar outfit. And that's what's making news on this Thursday morning. We'll have more news Thursday night because that would be this evening. 
if my clock is correct. Uh, with Grant and Eric in the newsroom, 5, 6, and 10, 5, 6, and 10 on television, also available on our YouTube page, our Facebook page, and our homepage if you prefer to use the web to consume your local news. And if there's something out there that demands our attention, let us know about it or so we can know about it. Look at the bottom of your screen. When we come back, Mariners lose, Apple Sox win, Apple Sox playing good baseball, and more. Sports in two minutes. You're watching Wake Up in Anche Valley on the NCW Life Channel. I know how you feel. Come on out to Blueberry Hills. You'll have a great time. We've got excellent food, a feed on the furniture kind of experience, and we won't hustle you out of your table. If you want a real farm experience, make a trek to Manson to Blueberry Hills, where you sit, you pick, you eat, and you visit. So come on out and see what all the fuss is about. Blueberry Hills in Manson. It's where the world is coming to. Transform your windows with a variety of colors and styles like the Allure Transitional Window Covering by Lafayette Interior Fashions. Hi, this is Darren with Mini Blinds and More. We can install the latest and greatest in technology to open and close your blinds with only a touch of a button. From the largest windows in your home to room darkening shades for the bedroom. From stylish shades for your entertainment room to custom blinds for those hard to fit places. We have a solution for all of your window covering needs. We offer a variety of window coverings from Lafayette Interior Fashions. Call us today. We are Mini Blinds and More, your local blind store. Walkabout Grill, open seven days a week for lunch and dinner in downtown Wenatchee and now downtown Leavenworth, where eating out is eating healthy. Seventeen minutes after the hour, they say you're supposed to hit them where they ain't in the game of baseball. The Mariners hit the ball really hard last night, but the Marlins kept catching it. That's what happens, it's baseball. Uh, so, yeah, they dropped the finale of their three-game set to Miami. The final was 4-1. to one. A lot of deep balls off Seattle bats wound up in the gloves of Marlins players. It was that kind of night from the get-go. And the pitch swung on hit in the air, center field deep. Hernandez is looking. He loves it. This ball is hit to center field. It is deep. Did he make the catch at the wall? Yes! Jonathan Davis just robbed Teoscar Hernandez. It was a slider belted to left center field. And at the very last moment, Jonathan Davis just robbed Teoscar Hernandez of a two-run home run here in the bottom of the first inning. There he goes. Good jump. Pitch on the way. Swinging a fly ball into shallow right field. Coming up is Hernandez. They've got a shot for the double play. They will. The throwback to Ty France at first. They will double up Bernie, who's on the other side of second. There's no way he could get back to first. That is a 9-3 double play. Bernie took off. Did not pick up the fly ball, an easy can of corn out to Hernandez in right field who made the catch. Suarez to center, Davis going back and leaps and he makes another catch. Oh boy, Jonathan Davis back to his right before, now back to his left. Two great plays in the gaps tonight. Goes out, somebody get up. Solaire out toward right center, and that one clears the wall just to the right of center field. A solo home run for Solaire and a 2 0 Marlins lead. A hold Solaire, you know, it hasn't carried very well for the Mariners, but with the power that Jorge Solaire has, that was a line drive. Pokes this one out to right field, and it is a fair ball in the corner. Sanchez and Segura held up. Sanchez is coming around third. He'll score. It'll go down as an RBI double for Nick Fortes. 
out towards center. Will it be deep enough? Rodriguez makes the catch. Segura tags. Here's the throw. It's off the mark. Sack fly for Davis, and Fortes moves up 90 feet. Now the next offering, so we're going to drive. Hit pretty deep right field. Sanchez going back at the wall. He leaps. He made the catch. He made the catch. He just robbed Suarez of a grand slam here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Owes him a souvenir that they thought they were about to get. And he's going to be there to put it away. Manager Scott Service said they would have liked to have swept the Marlins. They didn't, but hey, they, they did win the, the series anyway. Heck of a fight for our guys to come back. Obviously, uh, they made a couple of miscues there in the ninth inning, but um, you know, it was one of those nights we hit a lot of balls really well. Um, three or four caught at the wall, a couple caught over the wall. Um, you know, I need a few breaks once in a while or to sweep somebody and, you know, didn't have a whole lot tonight going our way. Obviously, uncharacteristic night on the mound for us. We typically you know, we lead the league in the least amount of walks. Um, and, and we gave some free passes away tonight. Uh, I thought, um, you know, Luis stuff was really good. It's not as sharp command wise as he normally is. I say all that and they, hit, I think they had two hits off him and just a couple runs. And uh, I do think, you know, they're a young starter, um, probably one of the best young starters in the game uh, and the youngest <laughs> starter in the big leagues. Obviously good stuff. I uh, thought we had some really good swings at him at times. Just a, a foot here, foot there, and it's a little bit different ball game. But uh, good series for us. It really was. I'm disappointed we lost tonight, no question. The guys are a little frustrated. Uh, but, you know, our fight at the end of the game, um, you know, it was there. You know, your little breakaway. The guy made an unbelievable catch going over the wall, and it ties the game. And you can't take anything away from the play, and, and nor Geno's uh, at bat there. So, again, good series. You won the series. You're disappointed. You don't sweep. Um, it's tough to sweep. You need a few things to go your way. And just didn't quite have enough tonight. Mariners are off today. They welcome the Cubs to town for a weekend series. By the way, that's only on Apple TV+. Plus. That stinks. I don't have it. All right, another American League West play last night from our friends at Les Schwab. Marcus Simeon and Corey Seager hit back-to-back -back home runs in the seventh to lift Texas over the Angels. Final there was 6-3. to three. In Houston, the Astros committed two errors in the ninth, and that allowed three unearned runs to come in. So the Nationals tie it, and they walked it off in the ninth on an error on what should have been a double play. It was a crazy finish, but Houston does win it. They beat Washington 5-4. to four. Oakland couldn't hold an early 3-0 lead, had its seven-game winning streak come to an end. They lose to Tampa Bay 6-3. Yandy Diaz had three hits and drove in two for the Rays. Manuel Margot also collected three hits and scored three times. The Wenatchee Apple Sox threw up crooked numbers twice last night, and they rolled right over Springfield. The final was 11-3. Brandon Brandham Ponce, I should say, had a two-run double. Reese, Reeve Boyd. Out of the two-run base hit, they scored five in the first inning for the Sox, and they rolled from there. More from last night's game, the voice of the Apple Sox, our friends Storm and Joel Norman. The Wenatchee Apple Sox improved to 9-2 and two to open up the 2023 season, their best start to a summer since 2012. The Apple Sox picked up an 11-3 victory against the Springfield Drifters on Wednesday night as they would score five runs in the top of the first and then score six runs in the top of the fourth inning. Reed Boyd drove in three runs, while Brandon Ponce, Travis Helm, and Easton Amundsen all drove in two runs apiece. Jack Moffitt started his first start of the summer, went three innings for Wenatchee, before Braden Boyd came in for the next three and two-thirds innings, and the Chelan native picked up the victory for Wenatchee in relief. The Apple Sox will go for the series sweep on Thursday night as they face the Drifters again at 6.35 p.m. With your Apple Sox update, I'm Joel Norman. Thank you, Joel. So that's five now in a row. Of course, they swept Victoria over the weekend. Now they've taken the first two from Springfield. And then uh, they're back home to host Kelowna on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We'll have tomorrow night's game right here on television. All right, to the West Coast League last night. What happened? Let's see. Uh, the North Paws, Kamloops, the North Paws beat Edmonton. The final there was 8-4. to four. Bellingham Bells uh, hung on to beat Kelowna 3-1. to one. Uh, Let's see. Cowlitz. Uh, they crushed Walla Walla 7-2. Walla Walla's been struggling uh, this year. Victoria, the Harbor Cats, beating Port Angeles 9-4. Nanaimo knocks off Yakima Valley. The final there was 12-0. Ridgefield nipped Portland. The final there was 4-2. And in a non-league game, everybody scored for Bend, I think. The final there, Bend 20, the Northwest Star Academy 
Nothing apparently banned missed an extra point. To the standings we go. Bellingham remains a game in front of Wenatchee in the north. Victoria a game and a half back. Kelowna is four games out of first place. After 34 years, a coach in hockey, Wenatchee Wild associate and coach Tom Rudrud is retiring. He has spent seven of his 34 years coaching with Wenatchee Wild in two different stints. His coaching career ba began back in his college playing days. He left college in 1986, went right into coaching in Minnesota. Then in Chicago, he teamed up with Bliss Littler in 2001 for the USHL's Topeka Scarecrows and then the Tri-City Storm. And then he was on the staff with the Wild when they played for the NHL's Robertson Cup in 2013 and when they won the Ron Below Memorial Trophy in 2017. That's the league's regular season title. According to Bliss Littler, and I'm quoting now, Tom will be missed for sure. Not only for being one of the top teachers in junior hockey for over two decades, Tom is an even better person. And quote, Littler went on to say, Tom made every organization he worked for better because of who he is. Happy retirement, Tom. We'll miss you around here. Last week, of course, we told you about Cashmere graduate Haley Van Lith winning a gold medal on the team's three-on-three -three tournament in France this week. She's on the NCW Life Channel's Life with Lisa program to talk about what it's like to win five gold medals so far in her basketball career. Yeah, you know, the first one was definitely like the most emotional. Like, I think I just sobbed like through the whole national anthem just because it's like, it's such an undescribable feeling. Right. But no, it's definitely a high that you chase over and over again because there's nothing like you know, having them place the gold medal around your neck and then you hearing the United States anthem being played. So, yeah, it's just like people always ask me to describe it. And I just I never I'm like speechless, like you're just speechless the whole time. Being from Kashmir has not changed Haley Van Lith. She has kept her small town roots pretty much wherever she goes in her basketball career. Obviously, like. I couldn't be more blessed in the area I grew up in and, and all the love that these people have shown me um, and continue to show me, you know, whether I'm at Louisville now, I'm going to be at LSU. Like so many people have reached out to me like, oh, I'm changing my gear over to perform. <laughs> yes. <laughs> whatever, I'm, whatever I'm interested in, like everyone's just always behind me and that's not something that a lot of people have. So I definitely know like how blessed I am on that end. But also like, I just am so grateful for uh, how they take care of my parents and my family. Um, and, you know, like I'm not home anymore. Like my brother's not really home. So my parents are, are here and the this, this community just loves on them and supports them. And, you know, it means so much to them that they support me as their child. And I think like that's another avenue that I've been like, wow, like I'm just, they show my parents so much love and support my parents. And I think that that's, really special too um so yeah i mean it's just it's always so fun to come home and and get to experience it in real in in real life and, and get to hug these people and shake these people's hands that are like i've been watching you ever since you played at cashmere so um you know it's never something i'm always amazed by the all the new people i meet when i come back to anachi that um are just supporting me in whatever i do and you can catch uh, Haley's conversation on Life with Lisa. You can see it uh, at noon today and at 5.30 right here on the NCAA Life channel. Or as we say in the business, check local listings. It's 28 minutes after the hour, and those are just some of the games that people are playing. For the Obscura Holiday, sponsored, or began anyway, by the folks who think you should take public transportation as much as possible, today is National Dump the Pump day today i have some interesting facts about gasoline and gas stations now there's a lot of people who say you know i'd love to take public transportation but believe it or not about 40 percent of all americans have no access to public transportation if they need to get, get to, from point a to point b they're either walking biking or driving gasoline of course was a worthless byproduct of petroleum until good old carl ben said i wonder if i can make gasoline power an engine and by golly he could that was the game changer if you work on an oil rig out there uh, either in texas or wherever they're making oil or on the out on the gulf coast coast or whatever oil workers make about ninety thousand dollars a year keep in mind it's pretty dangerous work of course gas stations their profit margin is tiny they only make pennies per gallon 
which is why you don't see as many gas stations as they used to be. Uh, we here in the United States, drivers in the United States, account for 44% of all the gas consumption in the world. Something we can all be proud of. Uh, we get more of our uh, oil from Canada and Mexico than we do from the Middle East. Something to think about there. Uh, a recent study shows that gas station pumps have more germs on them than the average ATM or an elevator button. Of course, Kentucky Fried Chicken, uh, Colonel Sanders started out by selling his chicken at gas stations. That's a nice combination, fried chicken and petroleum. Dump the pump if you can today. It's National Dump the Pump Day. 30 minutes after the hour. Today in history, the exact date is unknown. Most people think it was on this date in 1752, June 15, 1752, that would make it 271 years ago today, that uh, Ben Franklin went out in a rainstorm in Philadelphia and uh, flew a kite with a key tied to the tail to prove that, in fact, lightning is electricity. It's such a great story. It's a great American fable, even though nobody really knows the exact date. Apparently, he didn't write it down, but we'll pick it today just so we can mention it. There you go. And by the way, he stood on a box so he would be grounded so he wouldn't, like, die. Ben was no idiot. Uh, we always do birthdays. We love Arkansas, but Arkansas, that's a lousy flag. Come on, guys. You can do better than that. That's the state flag of Arkansas, if you couldn't tell. They joined the Union as the 25th state on the state in 1836. That makes Arkansas 187 years old today. Arkansas's original nickname was the Land of Opportunity. Then they changed it to the Natural State. Did they discover there wasn't any opportunity? I don't understand what that's all about. It's a great state. The three largest diamonds ever found in this country, in fact, there are three of the largest diamonds ever found on Earth, is in Arkansas. There are mines, uh, diamond mines, that you can pay a mission and go look for diamonds yourself. There's a lot of diamonds uh, in Arkansas. The very first woman elected to the U.S. Senate was Hattie Carraway, who was a Democrat from Arkansas. Probably didn't know that. And it is technically illegal to mispronounce the word Arkansas while in Arkansas. How they enforce that, I don't know. Happy birthday, Arkansas, 187 years old today. The Pig War broke out on this state in 1859 on the San Juan Islands. When they signed the Oregon Treaty, they overlooked the San Juan Islands. So the Americans said, well, we'll take it. And the British said, no, we want it. So they both um, kind of claimed the San Juan Islands. Nobody really cared. Nobody really lived there. Until uh, one day uh, when uh, an American farmer by the name of Lyman Cutler had a pig rummaging through his garden, so he shot and killed the pig. The pig belonged to a British guy. And uh, he said, you shot and killed my pig. I need my pig. And uh, Lyman said, I'll give you 10 bucks. The guy says, I want 100 bucks. They didn't get along. And all of a sudden, the pig war broke out. There was joint occupation, military occupation, on the San Juan Islands between American troops and British troops. They didn't really go to war. In fact, they drank a lot together, and they played baseball games and played poker, and they had holidays and everything like that. Park rangers in the San Juans during the Pig War said the biggest problem was that there was a lot of alcohol available. And then, of course, we got into the Civil War, and then the British said, this is a perfect chance for us just to take the San Juans, because the United States has got some crap going on on the East Coast. Why don't we, you know, they're busy elsewhere. Why don't we just take it? We didn't. The pig war came to an end 12 years later. It's called the pig war because somebody shot somebody else's pig. Larger wars have started from lesser things. And finally, the famous rain out at the Astrodome? Yeah. On this date in 1976, Pittsburgh and Houston were supposed to play a game, a baseball game, at the Astrodome. It poured, poured rain. It rained so hard that the streets that surrounded the Astrodome were flooded and nobody could get to it. The only people who were able to get there were the two teams, the Astros and the Pirates, the umpires, and a couple of support staff. But that was it. And they didn't have enough people to put on a Major League ga Baseball game. So a game at the Astrodome rained out. Both teams ate a big banquet in the middle of the Astrodome field because there was nothing better to do. Before we get to birthdays, at 33 minutes after the hour, I'm going to mention the name Lisa Del Giacondo. Lisa 
del Giacondo. She was born in this state in 1479, and you're going to say, who's that? Well, that's her. Yes, the model for the Mona Lisa, Lisa del Giacondo. Born in this state in 1479, nobody really knows much about her, except she is the subject of the most famous painting in the world. Heavenly Birthdays, Waylon Jennings started out as a uh, protege of the great Buddy Holly. Buddy Holly produced his first recordings, of course, played bass in Buddy Holly's band on the ill-fated Winter Dance Party in the winter of 1959. Waylon Jennings, we love him, we miss him. Born in the state in 1937. Everybody's talking about Harry Nielsen, the great songwriter and singer, an incredible performer. He was born in the state in 1941. He would have been 82 years old today. There's a great documentary called Who is Harry Nielsen? Why is everybody talking about him? I would highly recommend you check it out. Great artist. Peter Norman, you might not know that name, but if you remember Tommy Smith and John Carlos at the 1968 Mexico City Olympics, you know who Peter Norman was. He was born in the state in 1942. He was the Australian sprinter who finished second. Uh, behind Tommy Smith and ahead of John Carlos, and <clears throat> he was the one who stood with them with their famous protest at the 1968 Mexico City Olympics. When Peter Norman died in 2006 of cancer at the age of 64, Tommy Smith and John Carlos flew to Australia and were pallbearers at his funeral. Living legends, Mike Holmgren, Super Bowl 31 with Green Bay, coached the, he coached the Seahawks to the uh, Super Bowl back in 2005. Still lives in the Pacific Northwest. He is in the Ring of Honor. Mike Holmgren, 75 years old today. Dusty Baker, a great guy who finally won the World Series with the Astros last year. The only manager in Major League Baseball history to win a division title with five different teams, and he did it twice, and he finally won the World Series. Happy birthday to Dusty. He's 74. Andy Pettit. The winningest pitcher of the 2000s between 2000 and 2009. The all time leader in postseason victories is number 46, is retired. Andy Pettit is 51 years old today. And local legend Cooper Cup, of course, won the Super Bowl MVP a couple of years ago. Cooper Cup is now 40 years old today. Mike McNaughty has got an opinion. It's about social media. Chuck Egner for the Wenatchee River Bluegrass Festival will be my guest. Get ready to party in Kashmir this weekend. It's a splendid time. First things first, though, Felix the dog needs a home. It's Paws for Pets. Hello, I'm Jenny. I'm the Animal Behavior Supervisor here at Wenatchee Valley Humane Society. And today I have with me Felix. So Felix is about... Gosh, he's just under two years old. He was originally with us as a puppy and was adopted to a lovely family who had uh, circumstances that changed and they had to bring him back here. Um, Felix is basically an overgrown puppy. He's got that sweet, sweet nature. Come here, bud. Um, he's a little timid of new things. However, um, he lived in a home with kids and was great with the kids. He, in playgroup up here with other dogs, he's been lovely. He seems to enjoy dogs of all ages. He is a little bit on the bigger side of a dog, so he does have that rough puppyish play. Um, but overall, Felix is just lovely. It said in his last home he loved to play fetch. Um, yeah, he's just an overall great dog that we hope um, can soon get out of here and um, into a home. This shelter environment's a little stressful for a guy like Felix, and he wants to be in a home with his family. So you are welcome to come down here and see Felix at any point. We're open Thursday through Tuesday from 11 to 6. We no longer have a quiet hour, so you can come on down and meet any of the dogs or cats that are available for adoption. Hey man, how's your arm? Uh, getting better, actually, thanks. Did they give you anything for pain after surgery? Because I think I may have some left over. Nah, that's all right, man. Actually, me and my doctor talked about not sharing prescriptions, and that ibuprofen is a good option for me. The risk of addiction is not worth it. Makes sense. Take the next step. Don't share your prescriptions, and talk to your friends about the dangers of opioids.
The Clearwater Saloon and Casino has the best Vegas-style games in East Wenatchee. Come enjoy yourself and discover the nightly action. Win big and meet new friends at the Clearwater Saloon and Casino. Mike, Mad Dog McNally, and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Listen to me! Now, how do you feel about the fact that social media has basically replaced due process as described in the Constitution? Now, why bother with facts and evidence? Why should we take the time to allow for a trial and let a defendant face their accuser? You're a moron. What's the point of making sure a defense attorney has the opportunity to question witnesses and offer exculpating testimony? I mean... Can't we just watch 30 seconds of a Facebook video recorded by some random person's cell phone? I mean, why bother with the Constitution? I mean, this is Mike Mad Dog McNaughty. I want you to stop getting hysterical over nothing! And that's my opinion. You are ready to earn your BSN degree, and we know you need a special place to take the next step in your career. You are an engaged learner who needs modern labs and equipment, hands-on support, and small class sizes. You're a busy adventurer who needs trees, mountains, rivers, and trails. As a learner, as a future RN, as an adventurer, find it in the BSN program at Wenatchee Valley College are you dealing with a pest or weed issue and you just don't know what to do? We use the best pest control methods approved for areas with kids and pets. Whether it's rats, mice, ants, or spiders, or something else altogether. We provide the coaching and solutions you're looking for. And you can know that your dollars are supporting a local, family-owned and operated business. Allow us to help you get back to living healthy and pest-free. Harvest Valley Pest Control. Welcome back to the program. Every year at uh, this time, uh, Chuck Egner gives me a call, says, Danny, you want to come up to the fairgrounds here in Cashmere to talk about the Big Wenatchee River Bluegrass Festival? And every year, I have to think of some sort of uh, excuse not to come up because uh, I'm having an affair with Chuck's wife and I don't want him to find out about it. He still doesn't know. So here I am again, Chuck Egner, who coordinates the, uh, brings in the talent for the Wenatchee River Bluegrass Festival. It's good to see him, my friend. Good to be here. Thank you for coming out here. It's so good to see. I mean, we didn't have one in 2020. We didn't have one in 2021. 2022 went off last year without a hitch. You're back full force. you got a great lineup. And we're here on Tuesday, and this campground is already almost halfway full. This is a lot more people than we saw last year on Tuesday. I thought it was Thursday. Was it Thursday? Now I'm confused. <laughs> well, we, we tape on thir Tuesday, but we're airing it on Thursday. But here we are on this Tuesday. <laughs> sorry. And there's a lot of folks here. Yeah, there sure are. And, uh, and more coming. Uh, we have a big influx first thing in the morning normally. And then it's a little bit dead for a while. And then in the afternoon, there's rigs lined up all the way to Westcott normally. So if you want to hook up, and this airs again on Thursday morning, you're probably out of luck by now if you need a hookup for a nice rig. It's marginal at Thursday. But there's still room, though. It's just you won't have the full hookups. Mm -hmm. But uh, and you can still get water from a hose and things like that. And there's tons of tent camping, so there's room for people. Yeah. And the weather is moderate, which is beautiful. It was 90 yesterday. It's going to be 80-ish today, so it, I think it's going to be And really last nice. year it rained, but it didn't matter. Everybody had a great time anyway. And, of course, all, uh, the main concerts take place in, indoors anyway. So. Right. The Centennial Pavilion is uh, offers the only indoor venue for a bluegrass festival in eastern Washington. All the rest of them are outdoors, so... We're very fortunate to have Chelan County have this thing for us. Before we get into the specific bands that are coming, and by the way, they're all good because Chuck knows what he's doing. How do, as the guy who's in charge of booking the acts for the Wenatchee River Bluegrass Festival, how do you, how do you find them? Where do you, how do you go about doing that? These people are good. I'd like to bring these people on. I'd like to give these folks a higher profile. How do you go about doing that, Chuck? So we've got a nine-person board, and we've got a great group of friends. And there's festivals all over the Northwest and down to California and back east. Uh, two of our board members live in Nashville. And so what happens typically is somebody sends an email to the group and says, hey, you got to check these guys out. Or I met some of the people in Sister Sadie and they inquired about the festival. They've heard of you guys. And next thing you know, we'll just kick the tires. You know, I'll find out who their agent is or who the lead person is. And I'll just say, hey, we've got a festival third weekend in June. You interested? And I've never heard one yet that said no. Um, I've heard a couple of them that say, 
uh, for instance, Tim O'Brien, there's a festival at Telluride that's been going there for 45 or 50 years. He's been to every one of them. We're never going to get Tim O'Brien here, unfortunately, because he's loyal to that festival, and we appreciate that. Uh, Kenny and Amanda are loyal to us, so we know we can always get them when we want them. But it's word of mouth, and then that starts the the uh, cycle of emails back and forth and talking, and then we got to talk about money and lodging and all that. But it, it all works out. It's great. In the bluegrass community, because this has been going on since, what, 2005, 2006, something 2003. Like that. 2003. So in the bluegrass community, you have a reputation that the, the other acts know, hey, this is a great place to come. The people are great. The weather is usually fantastic. It's a great venue, and they're true fans of the genre. So that makes it a little bit easier, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, and the bands like coming here for one main reason, well, beside all of our charm and that yeah. kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> Back east, all the festivals, or not all, but the vast majority are outdoors. People bring their lawn chairs. They're all spread out all over the place. They're telling each they're catching up. They're talking. They're telling each other their stories. And the band's up there knocking their brains out. And, you know, I'm not going to say nobody's listening. A lot of people do, but it's not rapt attention. And that building over there, if you come in in the evening when the bands are playing, you could hear a pin drop if the band wasn't playing. Everyone is focused on the stage. And the band responds to that, and they love it. They hate playing in front of a bunch of lawn chairs. So that that's a, a big deal for the bands. I hear that every year. What is it about bluegrass? I'm gonna I, I love it, uh, and I know you do as well. Is it the mu- musicianship? Is it the fact that it's a true Americana music? What what is it that attracts people to bluegrass? It's approachable, the, both the music and the people. Mm-hmm. So after the shows, the musicians they don't jump in their car and go to the motel. Typically, they typically come over here and grab some ribs, have a beer maybe, um, walk around. There are various different levels of musicians that camp here. You know, I'm in the intermediate area. There's some advanced people, and those bands tend to find the advanced people and sit down and jam. And for the advanced people, even if they're really good here regionally, it's a thrill for them to play with the national guys. And you don't you don't see the, a blues guy drag his Telecaster and his Fender Twin Reverb out into the campground. Mm-hmm. It's just impractical. And with rock... You don't even get to see those guys. <laughs> got to have a, uh, uh, eyeglasses to see them. So, so uh, let's talk about the acts. Now, all of these acts are going to be playing at least twice, some of them even three times. Let's go ahead and uh, let's start out with Sister Sadie. Uh, talk about these folks. Sister Sadie is an all-female, all-lady band. Um, they are great instrumentalists. They're all good vocalists. And we have a special surprise. I believe we're either the first... I believe we were the first festival. They've added a sixth member to the band, so they, they, we bought them as a five-piece. They are a six-piece now, um, so that's going to be really exciting. And I've seen a good deal of video on them, and they were at Wintergrass recently, and I saw them at Wintergrass. So I've seen these ladies up close, dynamos. They're just great musicians all the way around. Six-piece would be, I mean, I'm thinking, okay, banjo, guitar, maybe a couple guitars, stand-up bass, mandolin. Where did, where's the sixth? So typically, it, bluegrass is a five-piece sure. thing. If you add a dobro, a lot of times a dobro is the sixth instrument. Okay. That so, And I'm not even sure what this person is that's added. It may not be a dobro. I don't even know because I, I don't know the person. So we'll find out Friday night. Katie and Amanda Smith Band, husband and wife couple. Husband and wife couple. They're banjo player. Um has been with him for a long time, he, not continuously, but he's, when, when I first saw him, he was a teenager, a uh, prodigy, obviously, um, and he's back with him, uh, Trent Calicut, he's a great player. Bass player Kyle Perkins, he's been here the last couple, three times, he'll be playing my bass, so he doesn't have to travel with that behemoth on the airplane. Uh, and they've got a, a mandolin player who I'm not familiar with, but if he's playing with Kenny and Amanda, he's good. <laughs> <laughs> Authentic Unlimited is going to be playing the main stage and the gospel set on Sunday morning too, I believe, correct? Yeah, the main guys there made their bones singing vocal harmonies for Doyle Lawson and Quicksilver. And they they were with him for a long time. So the that fiddle, means they're good cuz he's not he's not going to accept anybody who can, doesn't know their stuff. He doesn't suffer fools gladly. Right. <laughs> so he's a he was a great band leader and he retired a couple of years ago, 3 years ago maybe. And uh, they reformed without him as Authentic Unlimited. Got a couple other guys in there. Stephen Burwell, the fiddle player, is a regional guy. Grew up in the Seattle area and made the big time 10 years ago or so. He left here as a teenager. Now he's a grown guy, I think, with a wife and kids and that kind of thing. Fabulous fiddle player. It'll be great to see Stephen again. 
Nick Numis and Branch Line. Another regional local guy. He's from Snohomish County. Grew up in a family band. Um, played all over the place up here. Finally decided to move back east. Married a wonderful young lady in Wisconsin, and he moved to Wisconsin. And um, he was with uh, Special Consensus, who played here some years ago, and went out on his own, got Branch Line together. The Dobro player is a young Canadian guy that's as good a musician as you'll ever want to see. Banjo player is one of our board members that lives in Nashville, Will McSeveny. Um, anyway, really looking forward to that. We mentioned Kenny and Amanda Smith Band is a married couple. Uh, Rock Ridge is two married couples. Yeah, Dale Adkins and Suzanne. And uh, the other couple I've met briefly. I don't really know them. Uh, talked to them at Wintergrass. Great people. And they're added, uh, they added a, a regional mandolin player, so they'll be a five-piece. And I don't care how good these guys are. If a name's called Rusty Hinges, <laughs> I'm liking that. <laughs> Well, if I was in their group, I think I'd be the youngest guy. <laughs> Put it that way. <laughs> but anyway, they're great guys. Uh, the, the, the guitar player and main singer, lead singer, is Jim Delfell, and he's the MC. He MCs this whole thing and stage manages, and he's the hardest working guy in the whole uh, performance area. The festival officially gets underway Friday. It's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but the real party gets underway Thursday, today, with uh, shenanigans going on tonight. Run us briefly through uh, what's going to be happening tonight here at the fairgrounds. Well, we're going to have a luau, um, which is a little bit weird, but <laughs> years ago, uh, a lady decided that we should have a luau on Thursday, or they should have a luau. Mm -hmm. and so they had a luau, and they had lays and flowers and everything at their trailer. And it kind of grew, um, so we took over this um, area down here that's a common area, It'll be a potluck. Everybody brings what they want to bring. They'll sit around here where we're sitting right now and visit and have a good time. And then that evening, uh, we'll have a lot of people here, and the jamming will get on in earnest that night. And these guys and, and gals kind of go around with each other, and, and somebody starts a theme, and then everybody picks it up for 10, 12 bars, and they keep kind of going, right? Yeah. If there's 20,000 bluegrass songs, there's about 40 that everyone knows. Sure, yeah, absolutely. And those 40 will get played over and over, and I never get sick of them. Uh -huh. uh, they're great songs. That's why they've lasted. You know, great songs last, bad songs don't. Um, so anyway, yeah, a lot of fun. And you can go to circle to circle, and you'll hear similar variations of those songs played at various different levels. It should be pointed out, everything we're talking about is on the website. All I did was Google What Ancient Bluegrass Festival 2023. Everything came up. Gobs of information on the website, more than you could ever possibly imagine, but it's all there. But there's a couple of things I want to talk about uh, that are specific, and I know it's close to your heart, about, about Taylor Richards, a, a young kid who uh, got into bluegrass when he was about five, lost his life serving our country. Uh, in war in Afghanistan in, in 2010. That scholarship and that, uh, that program continues. Talk about that. Yeah, we're really proud of that. Um, Taylor's father will be here this year. In years past, uh, his father and grandfather has been here. Um, they're getting on up in years a little bit. I'm not sure if they'll be here this year. But anyway, um, Taylor was a great kid. Uh, everyone loved him, and he was a phenomenal musician. And he went off. His father and grandfather were Marines, and he joined. And unfortunately, it didn't end well. But we've had Taylor's Camp ever since then. Um, this year is a bit truncated because the local school districts didn't consult with us on their closing day. And they don't get, the kids don't get out till 4 o'clock on Friday regionally here. Mm -hmm. So uh, it used to be Friday afternoon and Saturday. Now we're going to cram everything into Saturday. They'll start early. They'll do the um, workshops with each other and break off into little groups. And at 1 o'clock, they'll have a concert over here in the open area. Um, and that'll be really nice. And then at, uh, I believe it's uh, about 5 o'clock on Saturday night, uh, yeah, 4.45 to 5 o'clock, um, Taylor's kids will get the main stage in front of 1,000 people. So that's kind of their reward, there's besides no, the hot dogs. There's no absolute, you don't need to know how to play guitar or banjo or anything. Or even have one. Or even have one. And you have told me about this in years past. You see these kids have that epiphany. That 7- or 8-year-old kid who all of a sudden has found G major. On a, on a guitar and, and understands the chord and, and, and you, they just light up. All of the young people who are between 25 and 30 that run this thing were here as kids, all of them. So that speaks for itself. Two more things, then we got to cut you loose. I know you're a busy guy. Besides, you got to fire me up some barbecue so I can eat. <laughs> uh, food, you going to feed me? going to feed you. Um, we have um, a variety of um, uh, vendors over here on between here and the main stage, and they have heroes. They have... Uh, 
bratwurst. They have a variety of different things like that. I cook a lot of ribs out here. People, if they walk by, I don't have to know them. If, if they kind of cast a side eye, I say, hey, you want some ribs? And uh, one of our donors, our, one of our major donors, uh, owns Hills Meats Companies, and they donate hundreds of hot dogs to the Taylor's camp, and they bring us ribs uh, to cook for the folks, and, and me and a few people do that. Um, Marie Vecchio and her crew do all the camping stuff, and Marie is the president of the organization. She's the dynamo. She's the reason we're still here. I think the rest of us uh, would have long ago given up, in spite of the fact that it was growing every year. Um, but this is the 21st year, the actual 19th festival. And uh, so if you're in your 20s and like this kind of stuff and have organizational skills and energy yeah, and want to join. The, Mar Marie and Chuck are getting, well, they're getting up there in years. Marie looks fantastic. Chuck has aged terribly. Exactly. Uh, and in fact, it's Marie who signed the bottom of my free passes that, that you gave us to give away, and we appreciate that, Excellent. Chuck. Let's wrap up with tickets. Let's get, let's, get, let's get some folks to get on up here. Okay, we don't have any advanced sales, but we've never turned anybody away. So it's $30 for Friday, $30 for Saturday, $15 for Sunday for the shows at 75 bucks. For 40 bucks, you can get the entire weekend. That's the way to go, obviously. That's a hell of a deal. And the camping is $20 a night, and uh, that's a heck of a deal. If you go to these campgrounds anywhere around here, you're going to find that that's quite the deal. And again, it's Thursday morning as this airs. It's Tuesday afternoon as we tape this. My guess is Thursday morning, all the, the, the wet campgrounds with the hookups oh, yeah. are going to be gone. Based on this rate of, yep. yeah. And it's first come, first serve. So if you haven't done so already, plan on dry camping because you're not going to get a, a hookup, I would guess. Yeah, so and dry camping, is it's just right there. Right. It's not like you're out in the boonies or anything. Exactly. Can I just stay at your place, Chuck? Yeah, there's yeah. three beds in there. Is there really? How many you need? Well, let's see. <laughs> one for me and your wife, and then one... <laughs> If you can get her off the couch right now with her back surgery. I hope yeah. she's feeling better, buddy. Yeah, thank you. Chuck Egner, it's always good to see you, my friend. Have a good time this weekend. I will. Yeah. And I hope you have a good time. I hope you stop by. You know I'm going to. Yep. Chuck Egner, everybody, give him a big hand. We don't have an audience. We'll be right back. Thank you. The family at the Eppladalen want to help your loved one feel at ease in their new home environment. Eppladalen offers beautiful one-bedroom and studio apartments. Residents enjoy three delicious home-style meals a day, laundry service, housekeeping service, and encouragement to make themselves cozy in their new home. Eppladalen welcomes your family to come and visit their family. Eppladalen, independent and assisted living. They make the complicated easy for you. Call today for a tour. Merry Maids can clean your entire home, business, or vacation rental from top to bottom, inside and out. Merry Maids will even take care of cleaning your carpets and they can pressure wash your home. Merry Maids has thousands of happy customers. They've been cleaning homes and businesses in our valley for over 25 years. Check out their glowing reviews at MerryMaidsOfWenatchee.com and call the cleaning experts, Merry Maids, to get your free estimate. Your satisfaction is guaranteed. So relax, it's done. I chose a career at Confluence South because I wanted to help people and I knew there would be opportunities for growth. I started as a medical assistant, but quickly advanced in my career. I received five promotions in only seven years, three of those in management roles. Most organizations don't offer that type of growth. Now, as a career pathway coordinator, I let everyone know, come join Confluence Health. Come grow with us. If you could live anywhere, where would it be? And what would it be like? Open up a world of possibilities when you sell your home and make those dreams real. At coldwellbanker.com, you can get an instant estimate on your home Compare cost of living city by city and learn more about our revolutionary seller's assurance program. So it really is true. Your dreams don't have to be just dreams. At coldwellbanker.com. minutes to go. It is uh, 59 degrees here in the big city. One thing at the start of the show I didn't mention, I'll mention it now. Sunrise this morning was a 503. Sunset tonight will be at 859. Sunset tomorrow, 9 o'clock. But the sunrise won't come any earlier than 503. So these are the longest days of the year. We never quite get to 16 hours of daylight. We top off at uh, 15 hours and like 58 minutes of daylight for these longest days 
of the year. And the other thing I want to mention, high pressure is going to be rebuilding over our area after that low pressure ridge that brought us the cooler temperatures and some serious big time winds. It's going to come back. It's going to give us some pretty nice weather, sun related anyway, uh, and warmth related today, tomorrow, and then Saturday. But then on Father's Day, Sunday, big drop in the temperature. From the National Weather Service, one more look at your forecast. In detail, right around 80 today. For the record, we hit 74 yesterday. And our normal high is right around 77 or 78. So it was a little cooler than normal. We'll be a little bit above normal, but not much. Little breeze today. It's going to be a little breezy right through the forecast period, by the way. Uh, 58 for the overnight low tonight. Friday, sunshine in the morning. Clouds in the afternoon with a high of 86. Clouds Friday night. And then sunshine. It's going to be windy Friday night with an overnight low of 59. Lots of sunshine Saturday. High right around oh, 80, close to it anyway, 78, 79. Right around there. And then for Father's Day on Sunday, drops way down with another cold front coming through another low pressure. We're only going to get to 67 on Sunday. That's cold. And that's it for us. We will see you Friday. Bye bye. Living your best life and making memories in Morocco. We are standing in front of three humped camels. No, they have one hump, Garrett. That's what I said. Today we're taking the journey of a lifetime to see some of North Africa's most exciting cities. Yes, we have so much to see here. We'll get wrapped up in shopping at a souk in Marrakesh. There's so many little streets, mm -hmm. the markets, and there's so much to do and see here. It's just like being a movie. We'll cook some super fresh meals in Fez. Oh. And kick back on the Corniche in Casablanca. People come here to go to the shops, cafes, restaurants. It's Morocco, and it's going to be amazing. Do you want to hold a snake? <gasps> yeah, let's see her hold a snake on camera. Come on, Jen, let's go hold a snake. You can hold the snake. <laughs>